Oh, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Good to be back here. Um, as far as uh, what's going on today, I invite you to please stay afterwards for when we will have a vote about the purchase of an organ. And uh, we will also be having a reception for our graduates. So um, please join them as well after the vote uh, right down in the fellowship hall. We begin this morning with a gathering hymn. Please stand and let us sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Thank you. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love that you, for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. first reading this morning is from the book of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the, the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Lord of God, Son of God, the, the word of the Lord? The Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may, not, may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the kids to come forward for children's time. Hello. So do you guys have pets by any chance? What kind of pets? Dogs. You have dogs? Just one dog? Is it in the house or outside or both? Or yeah. But it, it stays in the house most of the time and then, yeah. So um, how do you take care of your pet? How do you take care of your dog? Yeah. Feed it, yep, water it a bit to take it for walks. Yeah, yeah. So you like to play catch or anything like that? Throw the ball and, or sticks or something? Yeah. Um, so a pet can be like a playmate. can just bring fun and joy, right? They're pretty cool things to have. Yeah. Well, talking about pets brings up something important from our gospel story today. Jesus says this word abide over and over. And he talks a lot about love too when he's talking about abiding. Do you know what abide means? Yeah, I, I looked it up in the dictionary and it's got a whole bunch of different meanings. One of them is that abide can mean to live in a place or live with someone. It can mean to listen to and follow rules. Or it means to stay with someone, like abide with me. And I think we can talk about pets to get to understand what abide means a little bit more. So let's start with how pets abide with us. Okay, they live in our houses with us. And so that covers the first meeting, right? Live in the same place as us. And there's probably rules around your pet, right? Um, when you take your dog out, do they need to be on a leash? Do you usually take them on a leash? Yeah. 
Um, cats would have to use the litter box. If you had a turtle, the rule might be don't let the turtle walk on the table. Yeah, that'd be kind of gross. Um, fish need to stay in water. That'd be a good rule. Yeah. They'd. So that's the idea with the second part of the word abide. Okay, and then, then the third one is a little more tricky. That one means to stay with someone. And it's more than just like staying in the same room. It's like staying with them through thick and thin, uh, no matter what. You think your dog would do that? Dogs are pretty known for that. Yeah, they kind of stick with us. So your dog abides. And Jesus asks us to abide with him. And he's saying this, it can be a little confusing, but what he's saying is that um, the Father loves you, and he loves us. Or I mean, the Father loves Jesus and loves us through Jesus. Um, then comes that word abide. Abide in my love, or live in my love. Follow the rules of my love. Stay with me no matter what. And then Jesus says, if you do that, you will have joyful hearts. So, we abide in love with Jesus, and by doing so, we can love others even more. That's basically what he's saying. And so, let's pray. Loving God, teach us to abide in your love. To live lives full of love. To listen to the needs of others. And to love and care for them no matter what. Thank you for abiding with us no matter what. Amen. All right, go in peace. When I was a kid, my cousins and I would play superheroes. And we would leap from beds and from the stairwell to practice our superpowers. And I loved Wonder Woman. I would clang my big bracelets that I'd taken from my sister's bedroom. And I would protect the world from dangerous villains like cats and dogs and the occasional pig. And some of you may have played or um, uh, fantasized about superhuman powers or played with superhero figures, action figures and stuff. And when we did that, we looked good, we felt good, we felt strong, and we could be heroes, and the fears of the world could be conquered. But... As life goes on, our Wonder Woman and Batman capes begin to get a bit threadbare. And others of you may have lost yours altogether. Maybe you left them among disillusioned, crumpled heaps. Maybe you accidentally dropped your superpower cape in the dumpster or packed it away in the attic with other childhood aspirations and dreams. And some of you never took it out of the box to begin with. We feel so ordinary and powerless in this magnificent world. The risk of loving, being fully alive, it really can fill us with anxiety. The real world can feel a scary place, especially a scary place to be a hero in. So it's easier to forget the hero's calling, not listen to it, and sing a song of silence. 
Now is a time of change in this community known as Messiah Lutheran Church. Messiah has posted its ministry site profile. You are officially in the interviewing phase of the call process and you wait with bated anticipation for those candidates to interview. And sooner than later, you will be engaging in a very heavy decision-making process, that of calling a pastor. And that can bring up stuff, distress, amid a whirlwind of excitement, right? So in the middle of all this change and this good stuff, that you're feeling, there's also a feeling of anxiety, maybe, or fear. Something around the questions of, well, what's next? Or, what's the right decision, right? Or, what's going to change? Or, what's going to stay the same? <laughs> It could be either one. God does have a plan, and it's a good one. And worry has little usefulness in this journey of life. Nevertheless, your superpowers y'all have, and the hero's journey you're all called to, and that is the power of the ability to think creatively and effectively in times of uncertainty and complexity. And that is what's required of you now. Now is the time to dig out your superhero capes, dust them off, and take the travel, the journey of the hero. Now, this journey begins with singing. Singing to the Lord a new song. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in joyous song. Sing praises the Lord has made known his victory. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. That's Psalm 98. Powerful psalm. Sing to the Lord a new song. It's inviting you to sing new, to write a new story, to celebrate God's sovereignty, not only with song, but with loud clamoring. I love that clamoring of musical instruments. Assures the celebrants that God will deliver from oppression and judge all of creation with equity. So the hero's journey calls for singing a new song. And part of singing that new song is recognizing in all of our personal power and our strength and our prestige that there lies within us our own kryptonite. And it may be made up of personal loss or haunting past or flaws. And yet with each adversity that we engage in, we are able to build up a reserve of resilience, of chutzpah, of hope. And that this virtue, this superpower, is a gift, an empowerment comes with being real about our own strength and weakness. That our sovereign God lifts us up and judges us with equity. And in our lives, we encounter teachers of such superpower called resilience. Mentors mingling our passions and our pain and our limits with life's mystery and magnificence, mirrors of identity for 
knowing how God empowers less than perfect people to do good things and granting hope and purpose for our flawed and occasionally fear-filled lives. These mentors, these teachers of resilience, they help us accept and work with our own spiritual poverty. Probably the greatest of these teachers is Jesus himself. So what is spiritual poverty? It does not sound like a superpower, does it? That's actually your superpower. Listen to what spiritual poverty means, according to a Jesuit source. Self-acceptance for being a limited, created being. Self-acceptance as being made of having, self-acceptance as having made peace with one's past. Readiness to let the Holy Spirit pierce one's heart and one's precious defenses. And acceptance of our being ordinary. In the journey of the hero, there are two universal spiritual principles. One is heroes struggle. And that's what I've been talking about. Heroes struggle. They got their kryptonite. They got their issues. They got their fears. Yet heroes refuse to let a struggle imprison their minds or their purpose or their faithfulness. And that's the moment you're a hero on the hero journey. Now another universal spiritual principle associated with the hero's journey is it's okay to have a good day. Heroes struggle, and it's okay to have a good day. Some of the happiest, most playful people with the deepest belly laughs are folks who have experienced heart-wrenching deep pain. And likewise, you don't have to play the martyr to be a hero. We live in a world that's just obsessed with working, or even more, with living paycheck to paycheck, watching that thin line between poverty and survival, and we've lost a very precious superpower a very precious gift called rest. My fellow heroes, be vigilant about claiming your Sabbath rest. Practice connecting with each other and with God and with the world. Make a decision to sing a new song today. And it's important for your spirit to do whatever is your exhale thing. Something that honors the ebb and flow of living. So go fishing, dance, play golf, run, paint, hunt, nap. Do gaming. Rest and renewal is a key ingredient to the path of resilience. Rest and renewal guard you from enslavement to work, and technological distractions. Now, the other part of being a hero and the hero's journey is that there are moments when you will be called upon to respond in self-sacrificing ways. So if you think self-giving requires some sort of spectacular human feat, remember what you already know. What you already know from being on the receiving so side of small acts of kindness and how powerful those are in our lives. So a tender glance, a lost art of Handwritten notes, a hug, 
making beauty like people in the streets of New York City did after 9-11 when they dusted off their instruments the next day and played for passerbyers who were in need of the balm of Gilead that day and that month and that year and that life. So dust off that cape. Dig it out of that box of childhood dreams stuffed away in your attic. Claim your hero's calling in life. Get out of your heads that you have to be exceptional in everything or nearly everything. The hero's journey It is one of surrendering our fear and anxiety and worry to a higher power. It is not one that is without these things. It is one with them, and then they are surrendered. The Lord has done marvelous things, the psalm says. And we can rest assured in that. We can understand that this higher power we surrender to, it is modeled or a modeler of the hero's life for us in Jesus Christ. So make a choice to sing a new song. Not the song of worry and fret, nor the song of what used to be. Make a choice to sing a new song. For the Lord has done marvelous things, marvelous things with limited created beings. So make peace with your past and sing a new song. And in that new song, your vulnerability will be pierced. Your ordinariness will be called out and your playfulness will be required. So everyday heroes gather round, have faith in your voice for it's time to sing a new song. Accept that you'll have your own kryptonite to deal with in life and accept what it is. Then use it. And with each stumbling and adversity that you encounter, build up a reserve of resilience and chutzpah and hope. And in that, remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Know that you are known. You are known by a creator who brings beauty and order from chaos. You are known by a hero who responded to the call of self-sacrifice so that you may be free and you are known by a guiding power that is with you and it is daily whispering in your ear it's going to be okay amen
rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. Holy God, your voice calls us to worship, where discord bellows in the, within the church, unite us in harmony, where we lack direction, guide us in singing your song with our unique voices. Hear us, O God. Creative Lord, your melodies form the earth and all that is in it. Receive the roar of the sea and the rhythmic clap of the rivers. Rejoice as the hills ring out in praise. Hear us, O God. Holy One, you hear all our moans and groans. Where lament and the blues resound, send us to listen. Send us to comfort. Send us to build relationships rooted in your justice and peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Serenade the estranged and all who suffer alone. Accompany high-functioning addicts and the frightened with who have no one to turn to. Give rest to overworked caregivers and to people living with schizophrenia. Today we pray especially for those we keep in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Eternal song, you call us to share our gifts our, with, for your glory. We thank you and praise you for our musicians and vocalists, choir directors and hymn writers. Bless all who lead and all who sing in worship. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your goodness echoes through all time with the songs of the saints. Thank you for all the disciples who have mentored us through their gift of music. Keep your song within us this day and always. Hear us, O God. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Son and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The, the peace of Christ be with you all. Please take this time to share the peace with one another. You may be seated for the offering once again. The Upon This Rock campaign uh, growing a mission went out this week. You should have them or they should be arriving shortly. I invite you to take a look at uh, the content and prayerfully think about uh, an offering for uh, maintaining the buildings and uh, paying off our debt. Thank you very much.
Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses, of the resurrection with earth and sea and all the creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will, your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Now let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Alleluia. You may be seated. All are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We will commune along the railings. You may stand or kneel as you are able. You'll receive the bread and then either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. There are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know, and the ushers will let you know when to come forward. Come, let us eat.
Please stand and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I do invite the, any graduates that are here to remain standing or to stand up got a couple. And so for you, we'd like to pray a prayer of discernment and blessing upon your lives. And in this um, stepping stone moment in your life, uh, milestone moment. And um, so as a community, let us pray this prayer of discernment. Loving God, we pray for the wisdom to discern your call in our lives. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the wisdom to make healthy choices in the face of endless and confusing options. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the grace to redefine our relationships with our parents and our friends as our lives change. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the grace to form new relationships with new friends as we move forward from this place. We pray for the courage to swim against the current of society as we seek to follow where you lead us. Hear our prayer, O God. We pray for the courage to take a stand with you for justice and peace in this world in this time. Hear our prayer, O God. Amen. Amen. And now uh, you may be seated and we'll have announcements now. So. Are there any... Okay. Another note for uh, our youth and their families following the 11 o'clock service. Uh, we'll be going over the details for the um, youth gathering trip. And uh, again, that will be after the 11 o'clock service, so about noon. And following this service, we will have a congregation of vote on an organ purchase. We also are having graduate recognition out in the uh, fellowship area, so please join us for that. You'll see that Safe to Sleep needs, uh, some, has some needs, and you can look at that list, as well as the endowment fund. It's that time of year when you can um, fill out requests and let them know they need to know by May 28th, which will come up soon enough. Also, keep in mind our the next couple weeks, next weekend, uh, we will have a baptismal remembrance, and um, the weekend after that will be our confirmation service during the 11 a.m. service, and the weekend after that is Memorial Day weekend, which will begin our summer schedule. 5.30 a Saturday continues as is, uh, but Sunday mornings will change to one service at 9.30 a.m., and we'll 
uh, what's the word I want to use? One week it will be, <laughs> yeah, it will rotate. <laughs> so one week it will be the 8.30 version of worship, and then another week it will be the 11 o'clock version of worship. And so that will be our 9.30 Sunday morning service from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Okay. I think that's it for announcements. Please stand and receive the benediction. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Alleluia, Christ is risen.